this week on Strong Arm Sports Podcast. I mean, I feel, let me tell you, I don't know if y'all know. Hold up, man. They don't know. Cue the sad music. Cue the sad music. It was a snowstorm in Atlanta, Georgia. It, no, it wasn't. It was. No, it, it wasn't, wasn't a was. snowstorm. We supposed to be the losers, but we win it, no. They used to laugh at us, no, we win it, no. They used to tell me nothing. What's going on, folks? Welcome to a brand new exciting episode of Strong Arm Sports Podcast. We are the realest sport podcast in all the land. You see how I did my hand right there, bro? In all the land. True. This happens to be the first time that you are watching or listening. I go by the name of K-Spade the Prospect. And I'm your boy, Paris 57 and together we form Strong Arm Sports. Spade! Yeah. Yes, sir. Spade, it's not like you're feeling good over there. It feels like you got your mojo back in 2017. I mean, I feel, let me tell you, I don't know if y'all know. Hold up, man. They don't know. Cue the sad music. Cue the sad music. It was a snowstorm in Atlanta, Georgia. It, no, it wasn't. It was. No, it, it wasn't, wasn't a was. snowstorm. Did you have to shovel snow? Yes, I did. We got snow in Jersey. Hella snow. Spade told well, me he went out there and shoveled with a spoon. That's how much snow they but got. But not no, I'm talking about one of them big, like a super spoon. Like, not no little bitty spoon. And y'all see, man, I got my scarf on today, man, you know. Shout out to GA. It's 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 hard. It's hard on us, man. But I feel good. I really do. I got me some hot cocoa during the show. I feel great. How you feeling? I'm I'm straight. Let's get it. I want to jump right into it. Let's get it popping. We want to start right here in the NFL where I want to be. Spade, your dolphins out there getting that work. But we ain't talking about that. <laughs> Bro. We ain't going to talk about that. I'm going to do you a favor. We ain't going to talk about that. Shout out to you. You ended up tying the pick'em game. Shout out to you. We tied up. Where's born? I think right. I'm up one. I, I really think I'm up one. Check the tape. Check the tape. But, <laughs> Faye, that ain't where I want to start. I want to start in the NFL. And we want to take it up to Denver. We want to talk about these Broncos. A lot of things happen in, in, in Denver. First of all, they didn't make the playoffs. Second of all, Spade. Second of all, let me tell you what happened. Uh, Kubiak kind of retired, called it Chris resigned. What I don't know what you want to call it. I don't know if he retired, took a leave of absence. But he's no longer the head coach of... The Denver Broncos, he resigned. But something else happened. To leave, snatched Crabtree's chain off. He snatched his chain off. It, it kind of caused all this ruckus fade. How do you feel about all those situations? Are the Broncos in trouble because they still need a quarterback, right? Or do you think Simeon is their quarterback of the well, future? Well, here's the thing. I, I'm glad you pitched this to me because if this happens to be the first time y'all listening to the show, man, check this out. I am the NFL expert of the oh, show, boy. and I'm the NBA expert of the show. So you, I'm just the go-to. I got everything for you. Okay, let's start right That's here. That's not true. The Broncos need a head coach. Let's start right there. Okay. That's the first thing they got to address. Once the head coach comes in, he's got a quarterback controversy thrown in his lap. Who's the guy of the future? Is it Trevor Simeon? Is it Paxton Lynch? Who is it? Yeah. Not only that, you got this great defense, and I, I want to give the Broncos their credit. The Broncos, this wasn't a horrible season by these guys by far. They went 9-7. and seven. They happened to be in a very competitive division of the AFC Conference, yep. and they ain't make the playoffs. But their defense is legit. However, you got this one guy over there that, me and LaParis, we differ in our opinion of we Aqib do. Tlaib. I think Aqib Tlaib is a really good physical corner. I think his best attribute is his physicality. However, when you that physical guy, sometimes... You got to be wired differently to, to acquire that certain level of physicality. And it just, it, it's disruptive to this guy's life. He gets in trouble off the field. He's always gotten in trouble off the field. He had this whole thing about, um, who is it? Harry Douglas. When he see Harry Douglas, he going to kick his ass in Atlanta. Yeah. Now he mad with uh, Michael Crabtree because he got on a necklace. So he wanted to break his necklace. Like, to me, he's just not a tough guy. Just, just, I don't know, bro. Uh, I don't know what's up with the Broncos. I do want to say this before you take over. This is only the fifth time in the history of the NFL that the two teams that was in the Super Bowl the previous year yeah. didn't make it into the playoffs the next year. And it's the first time that that's happened since 2002. So let's talk about that first of all. Neither one of those teams look like the same two teams that nobody wanted problems with last year. Well, as far as Carolina, like me, Spade, me and you talk about Carolina issues all the time. All the time. Whole line issues, True. not wanting to bring back Norman, just thinking they could throw anybody in that secondary because that front seven is so elite, which 
isn't right. the case. I mean, Coleman played well right. at safety, but them corners, I mean, they they young corners, so you gotta you they kinda young. gotta live with you know them getting burnt, learning. You know they learning, they learning in the in the water. They in the water and they learning and they learned that it's some sharks out there. You know what I mean? They learning. And sharks but, are born swimming. Yep. Yeah, sharks are born swimming. That's right. I want to say kudos to John Elway. John Elway said it's kind of the same situation. Maybe not. Maybe 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 not. But let me know. Let me let me just let me just say this to you, Spade. It could be the same situation. Let me know if you agree. It kind of, it's kind of okay. the same situation that the, that the Washington organization is in right now. They can either pay Kirk Cousins or they could let him walk. Broncos chose to let Brock Osweiler walk. He went to Houston, got seventy something million dollars, and I mean, even though he won a playoff game yesterday, we recording this on Sunday, y'all. <laughs> we recording on Sunday. Even though he won a playoff game yesterday, they played the Raiders. And let's be honest, if the Raiders had Carr, I had the Raiders winning that game. I want to know if you guys Easy. differ. I, I, you know, I want to know if you guys differ. I think the Raiders win that game with Carr. So Brock Osweiler won a, won a playoff game. They, they gave Brock Osweiler all that money. He had trouble all season in a lesser division. So John Elway said, you know what? We ain't going to pay Brock Osweiler. We're going to let him walk. And we're going to go with one of these young guys. They chose to go with Simeon for most of the year. Didn't have a bad year. Um, even well. Paxton Lynch played okay when he was thrown in the fire. But... Mm-hmm. I want to say kudos to John Elway because I think they can find a quarterback that can fit. They probably, it's, it's been rumors out there that they want to still maybe trade for Kaepernick. They want to trade for Tony Romo after the season. I don't know. But wow. John Elway said, we ain't going to pay this dude all this bread. We think he's a, he didn't say average, but I, I, I'm i figuring John Elway think he's an average quarterback, if not below average quarterback. That's why he decided not to pay him. As far as the situation with Tlaib, as far as the situation with Tlaib, Actually, I, I love Tlaib as a corner. I think Tlaib is a top top five corner in the league. Top, of course, out of that out of that uh, group right there, Chris Harris Jr. is the is the elite corner on that in that secondary. Tlaib, Facts. maybe not top five, maybe top seven, top eight corner in the I, league. I was I was gonna get you on yeah, that. Top maybe five. top, I'm glad you come maybe yourself. top eight corner in the league. I love his physicality. I like that Tlaib don't back down for nobody. Me and Spade kind of had an argument off camera. About to leave, and he said to leave didn't jump in Steve Smith's face, but he actually did right. when he was with the Patriots. He jumped right in. How Steve. did that go for him? Him and bro, him and Steve Smith had issues, and to leave didn't back down, and Steve Smith didn't back down, and and that's all I got to say. He, when he was with the Patriots, Belichick ended up benching to leave because he ended up co- costing the team like a huge penalty for what he did with Steve Smith. My point of saying that is to leave don't back down from nobody, and I happen to like that. He don't. He's an equal opportunity ass kicker. That's what he is. Let, okay, uh, let, let's talk about the, the necklace snatching. Okay. We're talking about millionaire athletes. What was proven by snatching this man's chain and breaking his neck? Nothing, necklace? but what, I what tweeted right after that situation, Spade, Crabtree needs to man up. Because around the league, everybody picks on Crabtree. When is the time for Crabtree to be like, yo, I'm not going to be, y'all ain't going to keep throwing rocks at me. I'm at least going to take up for myself. And I ain't saying Crabtree got to be no tough guy, no goon, none of that. I'm saying you got to be a man and you got to take up for yourself. They, but, they ended, Spade, let me just say this. They ended up asking Steve Smith. He was on ESPN one morning. They asked Steve Smith, if Tlaib would have snatched off your chain, what you would have did? He said, I probably got tossed off the game because I would have grabbed his face mask, face mask and tried to break his neck. Do something. Well, well wait, wait, wait. That I mean, I don't feel like it's fair to make the comparison that if he don't react like Steve Smith, who's a known tough guy, who's broken his teammate's face, of course he. I mean, but I don't feel like that makes Crabtree any less of a man. When Crabtree talked to the media after that game, he was like, "They was like, what was your reaction?" He said, "I just was like, like for what? What did you prove? Like, what? What was the point of that?" He said, "And I wanted to retaliate, but I knew my team needed me. I didn't want to mm-hmm. risk me being taken out the game. I, I don't know, man. I, I'm not why saying would he that call I for the ref, though, Spade. You, why would he call for the ref? Like ref? Like that's not a penalty. What's the penalty? I mean, hey, I can't, I can't defend them there." Oh, I can't okay. defend them there. Right. I can't I mean, defend them I'm interested to know. I, I, just, I, know, to, I mean, I know we're a little weird. late on this situation. I'm interested to know what the fans think. If it's Broncos fans out there, Bronco Nation, if you out there, let us know what you think. What do you well, think about you the, Broncos? the Broncos fans? You know what they think. What do they think? They think it's great. They wasn't going to the playoffs. No, 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 we no. I'm going just to talking the playoffs, about the, but we broke a necklace. I ain't talking about necessarily the chain snatching. I'm talking about everything. They coach leaving. You know, Elway, you know, not making a... The Osweiler, you know, not paying for Osweiler. You know, everything. Not just that particular situation. Right. Okay. Well, let's move forward. 
Okay. You're talking about the Broncos and, and their overhauling or whatever they got going over there. Let's let's talk about another team. Okay. You spoke on the fact that possibly Denver still has some interest in quarterback Colin Kaepernick. Yep. We don't know if that's going to turn into anything. But let's talk about San Francisco for a minute. Not that many years removed from being a elite team, a Super Bowl caliber team. Elite defense. All arrows yep. going up. Yeah. Elite everything. Mm-hmm. The, the fan base was loving. Everybody was a San Francisco fan. It looked great. Yeah, it looked like a few they years back, removed. Babe. Huh? I said it looked like they were back. It looked like they was back. A few years removed. Here's what we got. We got two two head coaches gone. Yep. Got a GM gone. Yep. We got a a slew of early retirements on yep. the defensive end. You got one knucklehead that you sent to Oakland. Sorry, Alden Smith, but you a little crazy, homie. Mm-hmm. You got you got Colin Kaepernick who lost his job. You got Colin Kaepernick who came back. Who LaParis and myself have been saying this. He has not looked bad this season. Sixteen San touchdowns, Francisco four picks, has babe. looked bad. Sixteen what touchdowns, four picks. Exactly. San Francisco has looked bad. He don't really have a whole lot of weapons around him, but Colin Kaepernick has not looked bad this year. Yep. And what the hell is next for this team? You got Chip Kelly, who, and I'm not a Chip Kelly fan. Let me be the first to admit, but I definitely felt like the guy deserved more than one year. Mm. You brought him into a situation that was screwed up. The, the situation was screwed up when he got there. The only flaw I feel like he made, everybody felt like for his style of offense, Colin Kaepernick fitted better. Yep. At the same time, we we didn't see flashes from Gabbert where Gabbert looked good. And Gabbert looked mobile, so he looked like he could run the offense as well. I mean, hell, we saw Sam Bradford run this offense. So, I mean, Gabbert, if Bradford can run it, surely Gabbert can. But at any rate, what's what's next for San Francisco in your opinion? And if you're a San Francisco fan, what what are you holding on to? What What's your hope for the future? Well, I, if I'm a San Fran fan, money. I'm happy that we got rid of Chip Kelly and the GM. If I'm a San Fran ma- fan, you happy? Yeah, I'm. Yeah, absolutely. Get him out of here. But if I'm a San Fran fan, I am furious. Let me tell you why, Spade. If you was, they why? got rid of Harbaugh because they decided to keep the GM. The GM and Harbaugh, for whatever reason, did not get along. So they chose the GM over Harbaugh. Harbaugh had them boys cooking, and Harbaugh's track record wherever he went. Turned him into a winner. Now, Harbaugh also has the track record of wherever he went, he'd be out after a couple of years. That's that's known. Stanford had him cooking, bounced. He went to the league. Went to the league, bounced. Went back to college. Well, it wasn't. He, he I think he wanted to stay in San Fran, but he wanted the GM gone. He kind of wanted more control. San Fran chose the GM over Harbaugh. But if I'm a San Fran man, fan, I am pissed because now they fired the GM. You could have fired the GM. We could have kept Harbaugh. And I think they would have still been in, in a good position. Maybe not, maybe not in the play, but in a better position. They, I don't think they would have went two and what fourteen, whatever they went. I don't think they would have went that with Harbaugh. Harbaugh has a known track record that that he can turn these teams for whatever reason. People re- respond well to Harbaugh. Hmm. I would be furious that now they decide to fire the GM when we could have still had Harbaugh as the coach. As far as Colin Kaepernick. I think they get. I think they should get Kaepernick another year. I want Cap to be out of there just because I don't think it worked. I don't feel like they have proper weapons. Carlos Hyde. I think he's a good running back, but he's in and out of the lineup with injuries. Kaepernick. Mm-hmm. I've been saying all year, man. Kaepernick has been playing bad. I've been kind of defending Cap play. Not the. You know, I could defend the other stuff too, but I don't even want to get into that. But his mm-hmm. play. If we just talking about his play, he hasn't been playing bad. 16, 16 touchdowns, four picks. With mediocre weapons. I mean, Torby Smith is a shell of, him, shell of himself. Not what he used yeah, to be. Yeah. Uh, Curly is, is a good slot receiver, but he led them in receptions. They got Quentin Patton. They got uh, uh, they got another wide receiver, too. I can't remember his name. But they got uh, Vance McDonald, who, who, who looked like who? he's it. Because that's all I like name on the they team. They just read him up, but he got injured. That defense is definitely not what it used to be. San Fran, I think they're in trouble. But now the question is, I think they had the second pick in the draft pick. What do they do with the second pick? Do they reach and grab a quarterback with with a guy like Kaepernick back there? Do you see Kaepernick stand? I don't know. I have a lot of questions about this organization. Where do they go at GM? Where do they go at coach? If you're a San Fran fan, whew, I mean, it's some it's some solid QBs coming out in this draft. But do San Fran take one of those guys? I don't guys? think that's their biggest need. I, I, I honestly don't think that's their biggest issue to address. 
I, I could be wrong. I don't, I don't know, man. I'm gonna really I mean, have to a, like. That's the type I mean, of question. Would you, you, you stick with Cap for one more year, Spade? Um. See, the issue with Cap is his money. Like, I don't think Cap played bad, but Cap got a massive contract. So, for the production, you kind of got to do it like you and I do FanDuel lineups. You got to say, you know what I'm saying? For the for the money, he's got to get me this. And I don't know if Cap can get you that because yeah. he's he don't have the weapons kinda around like the him. Same Tyrod, same situation Tyrod exactly. in Buffalo. Exactly. Exactly. So, it, it's not necessarily a, a diss on Cap, but if he don't have the weapons around him to produce... I mean, I'm still looking at his contract like we got this big old contract and he's not producing, whether it's his fault or not. Yeah. I honestly feel like they need some playmakers. I don't care what side of the ball they go on. I honestly feel like receiver might be their biggest need. I mean, you, you spoke on Torrey. Torrey's older. He's at yeah. the end of his career. Um, the other receiver I was talking I, about I don't was know, Streeter. Man. I, I don't his name know. was Streeter. That's who I was talking about. But go ahead. Oh, yeah, from the Raiders. Yeah, man. I I, I don't know. I man, don't know. I'm interested to know what, what the 49er fans think, man. If I would just be Let fair, because if we was going to give it to the GM anyway, I'd rather we got rid of the GM when Harbaugh was there and we keep Harbaugh and let him fix this up. Because he had them boys cooking. And, Spade, one more question, which could be a reach. Let me ask you. If the 49ers still had Harbaugh as the coach, you think all those defensive guys retire? You think Pat Willis retire? You think the, uh, they had another mm-hmm. little linebacker? I, I, I can't I don't remember think his they name. All do. You think they still do? I don't think they all do. No, I don't. Oh, I think I, they I don't lose a, I think, a, a I couple. Think be I don't there. think they lose them all. I, you know, you know what this reminds me of. What's that? And, and you're gonna see the correlation. The relationship that the players had with Harbaugh reminds me of the relationship that the Golden State Warriors players had with Mark Jackson. Mm. Mark Jackson's issue wasn't with the players; it was with management. Yep. Mark Jackson clashed with management. They had certain things they wanted him to do. They had certain players, not players, certain staff members they wanted him to hire. Mark Jackson had his team. He yeah. wanted it to be his guys. And ultimately, it cost him a job. But none of those players had an issue with Mark Jackson. Yeah. And that's the same way it seems, you know, with Harbaugh. Those players love Harbaugh. He's a player's coach. He really knows how to relate. He's an ex-NFL player. He played. He he went to a Super Bowl. He wasn't the starter. Jimmy Mann was the starter. But he went to the Super Bowl as a reserve, you know, on the 85 Bears. So a lot of the things that these guys are going through, he can relate to. And he knows he's still hip enough. I, I hate to use hip. And Jim Harbaugh in the same damn sentence because he ain't really hip, but he's hip enough. He get it. He's close he get enough it. to these guys. Yeah, he, he gets get it. it. It's crazy, man. I, I just, I don't know. I got a question for you. You you say you happy that Chip got fired. You don't think he deserved more than one year? Nope. Wow. He was, he, I mean, it was, I think, I think. I'm out in, of hot cocoa. Even in Philly. I think in Philly it's proven that his system don't work. I almost say it didn't work because he cooked when he had, when he had, you know, uh, Shady and those guys, but that was Andy Reid talent. When he started getting the pieces he want in that place, it didn't work, man. When he got rid of all the Andy Reid talent, that team went, yeah. He put his people in place, and and they was trash. Like I, I don't think That's his true. system works on the lead in in the NFL. I think Chip Kelly can go back to college and still be an elite head coach. I think that's where he belong. I think that system works best in college, in my opinion. I, I, I just want to say this, and I'm not a Chip Kelly fan. Let me say this before we move forward. The NFL is a different beast for coaches. We've seen some of the best coaches in the collegiate ranks come to the NFL and fall flat on their face. Yep. Don't forget, when you're watching the NFL playoffs and you see Pete Carroll coaching those Seattle Seahawks, this ain't his first rodeo with the NFL. Oh, yeah, Go exactly. look up Pete Carroll. He fell on his face a few times. So, I mean, yeah. but you know, I, mean, I don't Spade, know. I, gave, I just feel like they, one year. Spade. They gave they gave Chip Kelly the job like the day after five days after he was fired in Philly. Like it was like, yo, Chip, Chip on the market. Let's scoop him up. And I mean, I, but you know I, why? Why? I mean, they they needed a sexy name. They they just showed Jim Harbaugh to the door. They couldn't they couldn't come back with some some glorified defensive coordinator. Like, they, they needed that sexy hire, I felt like, to kind of calm the fan base. So if you're going to do that to calm the fan base, you got to give them more than a year. That's just what I think. I don't know. Mm. I don't know. I don't know. I mean, I'm, mean, just, I'm, I'm just an I'm, NFL I'm, expert. Uh-huh. <laughs> I, I, I'm interested to know what they think, man. I think Chip should have been out. But I'm, if, if they was going to give it to the GM, they should have kept Harbaugh. I would have kept Harbaugh. But let's move on, Spade. We want to move on talk some um more NFL notable Hall of Fame finalists. There's some guys out there. T.O. is a finalist. Uh, mm-hmm. 
Isaac Bruce, Ty Law, Tony Baselli, LaDainian Tomlinson, Jason Teller, uh, Terrell Davis. There's some notable Isaac big Bruce. names out there, Spade. Who do you want to get in? Like, give me one or two, three names you want to get in and, and tell me who do you do you think the NFL will, will slight T.O. T. again and not put him in again? T.O. Yeah, should definitely be all the same. I think we both agree, right? Yeah, yeah, but it, it's some names I think got to get in before him. If I'm not mistaken, I think Isaac Bruce is on that finalist list, right? Isaac Bruce, Kurt Warner, it's a few, it's a couple names. Yeah, you, you got to get those guys in first, I feel like. Uh, uh, T.O. I, I don't the think numbers. Isaac Bruce's numbers is better than T.O.'s. Well, I was just about to say, I, I think T.O. got the numbers. I think his off-the-field antics is always going to stand in the way of voters. And also, he, did he really win? You know what I'm saying? Like, they're going to look at that. Did, did he win? I mean, he cooked, he, cooked with, he cooked with San Fran when he was there. Him and Jeff Garcia had some issues. Then he went to... Went to Philly, they went to the Super Bowl, and then he helped Dallas. You know, I think he's. I, I would call to go a winner. They, I forgot that they, that Eagles team got to the Super Bowl. Yeah, that Philly team, and he played on like a half a leg. Yeah, like, yeah, I broke his leg, man. Like, I, listen, man, I know To off, but I know To off the field stuff. It, it was crazy, but that didn't stop his production on the field, and he could have been. Toxic. Oh, I agree. He could have been toxic in the locker room. But in my opinion, T.O. should have been in the Hall of Fame last year. With, and I know people like Marvin Harrison, but Marvin Harrison had some off-the-field issues too. Reportedly, yeah, allegedly, but... he had some off-the-field yeah. issues. He yeah. had off-the-field issues. T.O. had some in-the-locker room issues. T.O. ain't never had no issues off the field. He had, like, in-the-locker room I mean, Marvin issues. Harrison didn't never cry for his quarterback. Um, listen, man. I think T.O. I think T.O. You know who I wanted to get in, though? Shout out to the old line. I want Tony Baselli to get in, man. Tony Baselli oh, was doing God. it for a long time down there playing tackle for the Jaguars. I like old linemen. I want Tony Baselli to get in. I, I was kind of. I know people probably gonna kill me, but Kurt Warner, Spade. How you feel about Kurt Warner? Uh I don't know. You kind of throwing me on the hot seat right now because I ain't really studied these guys' numbers. I mean, we know Kurt Warner went to the Super Bowl with the Cards. Went, uh, yeah, won a Super Bowl I know with Kurt the, Warner uh, got his opportunity because somebody went down and he made the best of his opportunity. And then he lost his opportunity because he went down and he got replaced. Yeah. So, I don't know. I mean, I, I really got to see his numbers. I know he definitely uh, was a part of the, the Rams when they was the greatest show on turf. You yeah. know, he was he was a big part of it. Well, I'm going to put you on the hot seat I don't again, know. bro. I, I can't. I'm going to put you huh? on the hot seat again. T.O., yes or no, in. Do I think he should be in? Or no, no, no. I think right now, do you think they in. put him in? Yes or no? Like, this ain't what you think. I, I don't think they do. Oh, okay. LaDainian Thomason. By the way, I think they put T.O. in. LaDainian Thomason. I think we both say he in. Yeah, he's in. Terrell Davis, which is a... You know, Terrell Davis really only had, like, them two or three years with Elway when they went... Terrell like Davis that. is the reason why that team won a Super Bowl. I agree 100% right? with he that. He is the reason. But do you think they... Hall of Famer, though. You think he in? I, I don't. I don't think they're gonna put him in because I don't think they, they know put him in either. Me neither. That, that zone blocking scheme they had had everybody back there looking like the truth. I, I'm but TD is name. the reason Ty they Law. want a ring, though. Ty Law. Ty Law. Yeah. Hell yeah. Last hell but yeah. not least, Brian Dawkins, who I forgot to mention. Brian Dawkins. Yes. Yes. B Dawkins. In. in. You heard it here well. first. I think B Dawkins should be in as well. Making a muscle. to know on. who you guys think should be in. Who's in it? Who's out? In your opinion, leave it in the comment section down below. The show's on fire right now, Spade. Well, it's about to turn up even more, man. Okay. So check this out. I'm watching a little bit of television this past week, and I okay. hear this argument that Matt Ryan should win MVP of the NFL. And they made a pretty compelling argument. I got to give them credit. They made a really good argument. It got me to thinking. I'm like, damn, you know. The, now, first of all, I already apologize to you Falcon fans. I apologize right here on the show. You did. I ain't had you guys making the playoffs. Okay, let me just say that. You did. But I said, wait, wait a minute. You didn't either. You didn't either. Uh, wait, but I'm not apologizing. I'm just saying, but don't be trying to pile on. You're trying no, to pile I, on. No, I you said didn't have you them apologize. making the playoffs I said, either. I'm agreeing with you that you apologize, babe. I'm agreeing. Okay, okay. All right. I'm chill. I'm trying I'm to chill. pile on. I'm chill. I'm chill. Okay. I, got, I got my scarf on today. I got to act a little more refined. <laughs> but it got me to thinking, though. I said, damn, Matt Ryan, MVP. I just, I couldn't wrap my mind around it. So I'm throwing you on the hot seat because I'm petty like that. 
who gets your vote for NFL MVP? Do we really gotta ask, do we really gotta ask this question? Yes, we gotta ask. Come and on, you can't come you know, with no I'm giving it two hands down. You either gotta give it to Zeke or Dak. Pick your poison. I don't Honestly, care. We ain't doing no either. Who gets your I would, vote? I would, I would give co-MVPs out. Nah, nah, nah. That's what? A cop that's what I would do. No, nah, we're not doing that. Spade, that's nah, what I would do. We're not doing that. Ain't no codes. I, why can't give out co-MVPs? MVP vote? I should have looked. See, if I didn't know you was going to ask me this, I would have looked up. that. Yeah, then it ain't a hot seat. This is like a pop no, quiz. I, I, if I see, tell I you about it, then you're going to study. Seen, was it ever... Co-NFL MVPs. I think it was. I think Steve McNair and Peyton Manning won co-MVPs. Let me look it up real quick, Spade. But if if, if I had to pick, to I'm giving out co-MVPs, Spade. Because I'm going to tell you what, Spade. Nobody, nobody had the Cowboys being this good but me. Spade, was <laughs> I not talking that 15 and one crap all year before the season even started? Now, we didn't go 15 yeah, and one. Yeah, but that's when you was huffing glue. You wasn't, you wasn't We didn't go 15 and 1, that. but we put together a, a damn good season, bro. And I had us at like 11 and 5. We even exceeded that. I think we went 13 and 3 or 14 and 2, 13 and 3, whatever. But we exceeded that. I think I think the MVP got to come from that team. Wow. Oh, yeah. It was definitely wow. some co-MVPs, babe. Co-MVPs. I know it was. Co-MVPs. I'm giving it to Zeke and Dak. Okay. Uh, so... That's what you're doing. You copping out. I mean, I don't think I'm copping out. I'm giving out co-MVPs. I don't think I'm copping out. Matt Ryan put together uh, put together a hell of a season. I'm going to tell you what. Stafford put together a hell of a season too, Spade, even though, even he though, like, he kind of, once he heard his, I told you last night we was talking. I said, once Stafford hurt his finger, it kind of fell off from there. But I think Stafford had a hell of a season. I mean, who who else was on the list? Dak and Z. Oh, Aaron who, Rodgers. Aaron Rodgers. A hell of a season, like, at the game. 10 or game 11. Oh, you like, just ain't even going to talk about Tom Brady. We just I mean, ain't going to talk about Tom Brady? I mean, Tom Brady, man, you can't win it every year. I was, the only reason I want Tom Brady to kind of get it, Spade, is because it will grind Roger Goodell gears, man. It will grind his gears. A dude that was suspended four games, went MVP, and Roger Goodell, oh, man, it will grind his gears, bro. That's the only reason I kind of would like Tom Brady to get it. But I'm biased. I want to get co-MVP, co-MVPs to Zeke and Dak. But go ahead. Who's your MVP, Spade? Hold on. Let me look something up. Because you got me to thinking for a minute. Talk to Hold me. Hold on for a second. Because if I'm not mistaken, cool Tom ain't throw but one or two picks. That's it. What do you mean? Hold on. Hold on, I'm, I'm looking up some stuff. I'm about, I'm about to set, I'm about to set SAS on fire. Cause Tom Brady is system quarterbacks, babe. That's why he only throw them picks. All right, so here's what I think. This is my honest opinion. I kind of feel like I feel like Brady's the front run. That's just my honest opinion. Okay. I mean, for a man that that missed four games, come back, come back and throw 28 TDs, two INTs, and still be just shot a few. A few I'm not chuck on Brady. shot, four thousand yards. Trolling. I'm not hating on Brady. Brady had a great season, man. Great. He had an exceptional season. He did. But I will, I will say this: I actually would not be upset with Dakota Prescott winning MVP. I take exception. Now, hold on, Cowboy fans, calm down, cause y'all, you know, y'all get a little crazy. That's why y'all get knocked I, out I outside of the damn game, I, cause y'all I, get a little I, crazy. Keep it a hundred. Keep it a buck. That's why with your Giants boy. fans have to knock y'all ass out outside of the Play, game. Keep y'all it get a am crazy. I not the am I not the least biased cowboy fan you ever seen? Me and you had talked about Romo. What you, about you did what predict have I always told you about one, Romo? Which was just, you're not you're not the biggest fan. Thank you're you. Not the biggest Romo fan. Thank you. Like okay. I, and people say I'm not a real fan because I criticize my team. To me, that's what makes you a, a fan. I don't got to like every move my team made. I don't got to like every move they made. Okay, so since you you a rational fan, you will agree with this statement. Okay, let me hear I it. would be okay if Dak Prescott won MVP. I, I wouldn't be all right if Zeke won it because we know, the offensive we know line. for a fact that this offensive line makes holes you can drive U-Haul trucks through. We saw a man come off the bench and get a thousand yards last season behind this line. Matter of fact, when was the last time they had a running back to look bad behind that line? When? <laughs> when? Don't don't kid yourself. I like Zeke. Zeke's a good running back. 
He's got great vision. He's fast. He's He's got a great, you know, center of gravity, low mass. He can truck people. He's a great running back. But let's be real. If Zeke went down and y'all started old boy, would he not have a 1,000 yards rushing? Absolutely, Spade. If I could give Absolutely. MVP to anybody, I would give it to the O-line. Oh, yeah. well, I'm, I'm hashtag O-line so matters, bro. Now we're like, doing a three-way. No, that's that's five offensive linemen. So we're doing seven. <laughs> you're giving seven people MVP, the whole Spade. offensive line, Spade, Dak Spade, and Z. go hand-in-hand, man. It go hand-in-hand. I, I love, man, let me tell you something. Spade, you, I was a Dak Prescott fan when he was in college. I like the way Dak, yes. I like the way Dak took control of the huddle, man. Dak took control of the huddle. I think him and Zeke. Go hand in hand. I think they they work well together. I think they gel together. On top of having an elite offensive line, I'm not. I'm please believe I'm not naive about offensive linemen. I love the O line. Spade. It was a block last night. It was a block last night by the uh, Raiders. They ran a they ran a counter in the center pool, and I, people was like, "Oh my God, what an amazing run!" First thing I tweeted was that block was exceptional. Like I I appreciate the O line, but. I'm not naive, and I ain't like, so, well, Zeke did this by so himself. For that I'm reason, not it can't be Zeke, bro. It huh? can't be Zeke. For that hey, reason, it can't be Zeke. I, what you mean? It can't be Zeke. I'm just saying, I think How many two, NFL I think, running I think they backs go can't hand, run bro. behind an elite offensive line? We I ain't think talking go, that's Trent not Richardson. His fault. I think it go hand in hand. Okay. All right. Tom Brady is, playing, with a, Tom Brady is playing in an elite system. Cause we seen Jimmy Garoppolo oh dot ass dot people ass up out there, so he he ain't dot up them Dolphins. I mean, he left. I he mean, left the on Dolphins, the Kizar. Babe, come on, oh my god, he left babe, on the Kizar. The Dolphins not getting dotted up right now. Next, what what we got next? <laughs> go ahead, let's go to the NBA. Let's do that. Let's yeah, have let's some fun out here. I need more hot cocoa. Let's go to let's go to the NBA, Spade. So if you guys didn't know, a big uh, well, I was about to say a big trade happened. But people been flipping out because of this trade, but the Cavs made a move. I know y'all like, who they okay. moved? Did they trade JR? Did they trade Iman? Because those dudes were, were reportedly on the block. No, they didn't. They traded Mo Williams and Mike Dunleavy to the Hawks for Kyle Corbett, babe. And everybody, a slew of the NBA aficionados that I like to say, I'm doing quote fingers over here, said, this makes the Cavs the favorite, babe. Do Kyle Corbett make that much bigger of a difference? By the way, I before you don't go, think so. before you go, I already went. Before you go, I went. He shoot forty five percent from three. Talking about this season, because I got some numbers here. Let me give you this. Okay. Here's what everybody thinks. First of all, Cal Corp is thirty five years old. Yeah. All right. Damn, Cal Corp been what in the league say. forever. He been yeah. in the league like 13, 14 years. I remember Let's when he was with, with the Jazz. Yeah, man. Cal Corp. First of all, let me say this. So it don't come across the shade. Kyle Corver's a, a great shooter. Excellent shooter. Knockdown, spot up shooter. He is, however, a specialty player. And let me break that down to you if you guys don't know what that means. That the means that this guy here right here shade. got some glaring weaknesses. Get your he's got some glaring weaknesses, fam. That's what he's got, okay? He's got one job. You put him on the court, you give him his one job, and you sacrifice what he's bad at, which may be guarding people, which may be creating his own shot. You and I talked off camera. I said about two years ago, Kyle Corver with Atlanta, he had he had a run where he was cooking. He was cooking. Yeah. I remember the Hawks Twitter account was doing the, the Corver counter. That's what they call it. Anytime you make a three, they'll tweet an emoji of a basketball. Then they started to play into it too much. They was just coming down, giving the rock to Kyle. Like, shoot, make something happen. He look like a fish out of water. That's not what he does. But he can be a, a great specialty player. What people thinking, they looking at Kyle Corbin, they thinking Ray Allen. And I, I, I can see how they making that comparison. Let me give you some numbers. Ray Allen for his career shot 40% from three. Kyle Corbin for his career shoots 43% from three. Ray Allen for his career shot 89% from the charity strike. Kyle Corver 88%. Here's where it differs. Ray Allen for the career averaged basically 20 points a game, like 19 and a half points a game. Kyle Corver for his career averages 10 points a game. That don't mean Kyle Corver's a bad player. It means that the situation has to be perfect for Kyle Corver. Can LeBron James make that situation perfect? Absolutely. Absolutely. But you know who else on the team plays just like that? James Jones. You know who else on that team plays just like that? 
Shannon Fry. So I don't know what's the infatuation with LeBron and these old ass specialty players. He loves them. He loves them. He loves them. And I don't think the Cavs got worse, but I don't get everybody saying it's over. Cavs just won. Like that blow, it, it actually pisses me off. People say, well, it's over. Cavs just got Kyle Corbett. They just won another championship. What? Mm -hmm. We. We, we ain't talking Kyrie, we ain't talking Brown, we ain't talking Love, we talking Kyle Corver. Kyle Corver's the X Factor. Get out of here. Get out of here. And I know he shoots 43% for his career, and I know that's a great percentage, but that don't, come on, I, I just, I don't know. Maybe we I'm hating. Y'all let know me know. Brown like dudes. We know Brown like dudes Who that spread the court. Yeah, I know. Stop trolling. Spade like, he's old. Brown likes dudes that can, I mean, Brown likes dudes that can spread the court, get out of his way yeah. so he can penetrate and dish. I mean, if you yeah. look at the shots that LeBron James was getting, Iman Shepard, if you substitute Shepard there and put Kyle Corbett there, those shots are going in, Spade. If, at least half the time. If they put James the Jones I mean, where they got Shepard. Huh? If they put James Jones where they got Shepard, them shots are going in. I mean, but I, for whatever reason, they don't play James Jones. I think James Jones is really like a player coach. I think he's only there to coach. They play James Jones when, like, LeBron, Love, and Kyrie all sitting out. And he still don't get that many minutes then. So, I mean, I, I see your point. I, I think the move, I think the moves helps. I don't think it makes them like this so much better elite team. They already elite. I think, Spade, we've been saying right. before the season started before they, they made it. They just won moves. the damn championship. So, I mean, they should have been the favorite to win it anyway. That's, That's what I'm saying. We had them in the championship before the season even started before they made any moves. And LeBron exactly. James said he still want, want to make another move before the trade deadline. He said he wanted a backup point guard. So, we, I mean, I don't know. I think they had I think a backup helps, point guard. His name was Mo that Williams. Big of a difference. I could be wrong. They just had a backup point guard named Mo Williams that LeBron just sent to Atlanta. <laughs> well, I, I guess they ain't like Mo. And Mo, Mo said, "I ain't retiring. I'm about to get this bread." I don't know if Atlanta gonna buy Mo out. I don't know what they're gonna do. But Mo said, "I'm about to get this bread." They was paying Mo, and Mo wasn't even allowed in the building, so they traded Mo. Yeah, I definitely think. Let me ask you this. Go ahead. Why do you think? Why look? Just in the offseason last year, Atlanta made moves. They made big-time moves. They made a, a blockbuster free agency pickup with Dwight Howard. Yep. Brought brought Dwight back to Atlanta, where at least half of his baby mamas reside. I don't know if that's true. Shocking I just thought that was funny. Well. I, I, I don't want y'all to think half of his baby mamas in Atlanta for real. I don't really know. I hope at least one of them is, though. But anyway, they bring in Dwight Howard. He's playing well. They make the executive decision to, and first of all, let me also throw in, Coach Boonhoser is also the GM. Yeah. So you make the executive decision to send Jeff Teague out yep. and to let Dennis Schroeder be your point guard of the future. You basically telling him, like, we building around. This is your team. Yeah. And less than a year later, you blowing the team up. You got Kyle Corver out of here. You got – oh, and they read up Kent Bazemore. Yep. You got Kyle Corver out of here. You got rumors that you got Millsap on the block. Millsap can go. Why they why they doing this? Why they doing this less than a year later? They not they not even gonna get this lined up a year and they blowing the team up. Why? Why do you think so? I, I, I don't know. Maybe they maybe they maybe I don't they get see it. that they can't compete with the Cavs, which everybody already knew. So why even go out there and try? But I mean, you you play to win the game. I don't know why they would blow it up. I think Atlanta was doing. They was definitely getting better. Schroeder's playing better. Dwight mm -hmm. shockingly, because I was like, man, looks I don't good. Feel, you know, he's playing well. Millsap playing well. Baysmore, eh, eh. Up and down. Yeah, up and down. Up and but down. he's kind of get, he kind of got on track these past couple of games right here. But I mean, I, I don't know, man. I like I don't see them I don't see them keeping that, Mo. That's I think just they a head out. I don't see them keeping Dunleavy. I think they buy him out. So I, I don't I, know why they make the move. I, what I don't get, I just Atlanta look. Let me Bang know what the plan the is. Is this Atlanta, one of those man. trust the process moves? What you say? You've been banging the cannon on Atlanta, man. You just had to apologize for banging the cannon on banging the cannon on the Falcons. Now you about to bang the cannon on the Hawks? Let me tell you, people always say, Spade, how are you from Georgia? Right outside the Atlanta area and not a fan of Atlanta sports. How? Why is this possible? And I tell people, it goes back to when young me can wrap my mind around why we ship like the second or, th uh, second or third leading scorer in the league in Dominique Wilkins while we shipped him to the Clippers for Danny Manning with his two bad knees. Mm -hmm. I couldn't understand it then, and I've just seen that thing follow us. I just 
star players, we either don't make the effort to keep them. I, I don't know. I, I saw Neek gone. I saw... I saw Dion gone. I mean, it just, it don't matter. Mookie you can look at what the Braves are doing. Y'all kept Mookie Braves Blaylock been... and Stacey Adams. I mean, I mean, Stacey Hartman. We ain't even keep Plastic Man. We ain't keep him neither. <laughs> we ain't keep him. So, I don't know, man. I, I don't know what Atlanta be doing. Like, right now, I was like, okay. I didn't, I didn't think. I actually said before we got Dwight Howard. I said that the best place for Dwight Howard was Atlanta. I actually said that here on the show. You did. Prophesized that right. They went out. They got Dwight. I didn't think Dwight would look that good in the system. Turns out Dwight looks really good. He wanted to get out of Houston. He didn't want to be a pick and roll big man. He wanted to be a back to the basket big man. He looks good. The team looked like they got an up arrow. Can they compete with Cleveland? No. Blowing the team up, is that going to make them compete with Cleveland? No. Is there anybody in the draft that they can get that will help them compete with Cleveland? No. No. So it what were they thinking? I, I don't know, man. It's just, it's a head scratcher to me. I don't get it. And I also don't get people who feel like this makes the Cavs the best team in the whole wide world. Don't get it. I think it's it helps. still three MVPs I think it on helps, that damn but I don't team think over it's there that big. I mean, Coast. I don't think you could say, oh my God, it's over. Like, I mean, they got, <laughs> uh, Golden State got three of maybe four MVP caliber players. Yeah, man. I don't think you can say that it's over with Kyle Corver. I think he helps, but I, di- I damn sure don't think you can be like, yo, it's over. Who he going to guard? That's what I want to know. He ain't going to guard nobody. He coming in there to get, he probably going to get Facts. 20 minutes. He going to, they got him in there to shoot the lights out and that, that about it. <laughs> that about it. Well, uh, we, can I go? Yeah. I got some more stuff. Can I yeah, go? Let's move on. All right, so look, we talked about the fact that the Hawks got some players moving around. They got Paul Millsap possibly on the block. Turns out the Hawks not the only team. Right. Now, you know the trade deadline is around the All-Star break for the NBA, so we got another month, month and a half before yep. they say, that's it, no more trades. And this is the time of the year where you start just hearing some crazy things. Most of it be rumors. Of course, the Celtics think they're going to get everybody. That's like This is annual stuff. You see this every year. But some of these names are confusing to me. I saw Jimmy Butler's name out there. Supposedly, allegedly, Chicago got Jimmy Butler's name on the trade block. We already know the Hawks got Paul Millsap name on the trade block. I don't know what's going on with Chicago and Rondo. Brook Lopez. I I tried to tell y'all the Rondo thing wasn't going to work. I don't know, man. What's the craziest thing out there to you? Got to be the Jimmy Butler one, right? Got to be Jimmy Spade. Spade. Jimmy Butler just put together an amazing week this past week right here. I that's because they motivated him by telling them he, he was on maybe, trade. Maybe. Maybe that's it. Maybe they he like, yo, they want to trade me? Watch this. Spade, we cannot. Y'all know I'm a Bulls fan. We cannot trade Jimmy Butler. We cannot trade Jimmy Butler. And I see people on Twitter talking about some, oh, my God, Jimmy Butler. First Rose, then this guy, and Noah. Then, come on, man. You know they need to be trading. They need to be trading Nico Meredith. Get him up out of there. Trey Nico. <laughs> <laughs> Trey Nico. Nico. I've been, right. been calling for Tony Snell to get traded. Way back when. Let me tell you something, Spade. Tony looked like new money, though. And he do. Yeah, you know, sometimes a change, a change of scenery does change that. Scenery. Yeah. But I'm going to tell you what, Spade. I like Michael Carter Williams. I don't know why nobody else like him, but I like Michael Carter Williams. To me, yeah, he kind of, I, I told you, Spade, when he was, even when he was in uh, Milwaukee, I said he kind of puts me in the mindset of a young Jason Kidd. Jason Kidd couldn't shoot him when he was young. But me Michael too. Carter Williams, right. say it again. I said, I agree. Yeah, Michael Carter Williams puts me in that same mindset. Jason Kidd had 12 points, 10 boards, 13 assists, or 9 boards, 13 assists. And Michael Carter Williams may not be as good of a passer, but he's not as good of a passer as Kidd was. But he puts me in that same mind frame. He can get better as a shooter just like Jason Kidd did. And I don't know why teams just keep giving up on Michael Carter Williams. I hope, especially with the Rondo situation, I hope we keep Michael Carter Williams. I hope we do. I don't think we will. But I hope we do. Even the Rondo situation, there's rumors out there that the Cavs, if Rondo's on the block, the Cavs want to try and make a, a deal to get Rondo. And if the Bulls was to release Rondo, they will scoop Rondo up. I don't know what's going on. I hope we don't trade, trade Jimmy Butler. Brooke Lopez, it's kind of crazy because I don't think, it ain't many places a guy like a Brooke Lopez, in my opinion, a fit. You I know, disagree. Because he's a, he's a defensive liability. He don't grab boards. He get like, Four or five boards. Like, he going he go to score. But, I mean, they was talking about Brooke Lopez going to 
Oklahoma, you know, everybody go to Oklahoma City too. They saying Millsap want you know could go to Oklahoma City. They saying that Blake right. Griffin gonna go to Oklahoma City, you know, in a trade via trade or in a, in the right. off season when when his we contract is up. up. But Brook Lopez to to the Thunder, that's Enos Cantor. Like you, it's the, they're the same people to me. They are the same people. I mean, Brook Lopez may well, be a, a little it, I, better. I disagree, though. I don't think I don't think Brook Lopez is that bad defensively. Mm. I just think he's a, a below average rebounder. But to me, the perfect spot for I, I don't know how it don't really make this team great. But the perfect spot for him would be Denver. I would love to see Denver get a big who can score, get a Nuggets. I mean, get they a got a big who can they really Jokic. Jokic is it, Spade. Jokic, Jokic is okay. He ain't no Brook. Bro, offensively, Jokic is it, babe. I don't know if you've been you watching he, Jokic. You he's, I don't think he can score like Brook. Brook shoot bro, threes and everything, means, man. Babe. Let him let him know in the comment section, y'all. Jokic is me, babe. I know you a little older, yeah. so you be sleep when them West Coast games come on. Jokic is Damn mean, right. bro. Is he shooting threes like Brook? Yes, he is, babe. He shoot threes. Is he? Yes. Okay. Jokic can All shoot right, threes. I research. think I think he's a great passer. He's a good rebounder. I like Jokic, bro, a lot. I like Joker a lot. I mean, I like Brook Lopez. I just, I think Joker is definitely guys though. So Joker is definitely a better dude, rebounder. I, I'm, st- I'm still on this Joker thing over here, man. Oh, oh my gosh. I know we ain't talking about a man that averaged ten points a game, and we saying that he, bro, he just spade. He, that's not fair because he just got in the starting lineup. Like you got to look at like his last ten games. He wasn't even starting. They were starting for Reed and Nurkic. And now, and now you got like the flu or something, so he hasn't been playing. I thought that was the same person, Nurk it and Jerk it. No, 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 no. But Joke it over the last ten games, been giving, been giving dudes like twenty a game with like ten boards and like seven dimes. That's all, man. That, that dude, I'm telling you, if any, them, if them, because this reports that they want to trade for Reed. Wilson Chandler, Denver got pretty much everybody on the block too, except for Jokic. Nurkic is on the block in Denver. Denver want to trade a lot of people too. But Jokic is not one of them. They want to trade Wilson Chandler, Will Barton. Will Barton said he want to stay in Denver, by the way. Uh, Nurkic, they want to trade a lot of people out there in Denver. But Jokic is like it. Let them know in like the comment Brooke. section, y'all, how Jokic play, man. That dude it. And I, I ain't might be too nice. keen he on saying people Lopez. lit. Ain't no Brook Lopez though, mm. not yet. Mm. He may be not better. offensively. He may be better. Not offensively. He may be better, Spade. In the comment section, who you taking, Joker or Brook Lopez? Leave it in the comment section down below. I'm a strong armor topic in there. You ready to move on? Let's go. Let's move on, Spade. We got the pick 'em game. You tied it up. I think I'm up one game. By the way, check the tape. You ain't. Check the tape. You I ain't. think I'm up one game. Spade. You ain't. But yes, we tied the pick 'em game. It's tied. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. it hurts my soul. It hurts my soul to go to this game. But we got a pick'em game on Friday night, January 13th. Oh, that's Friday the 13th, too. Crazy. We got the Grizzlies at the Rockets, baby. The Grizzlies just beat Golden State Warriors twice. They beat them twice. Go to them, man. Shout out to the Grizzlies, man. With all the injuries, they still bounce back. Them dudes be balling, man. Shout out to Conley coming back from his injury, balling. Shout out to Mark Gasol. They was down big at Golden State, and the boys came back and was balling points. to the Warriors and was balling. Yep. Babe. Yep. Yep. We got the Grizzlies versus the Rockets. Rockets at home. Who you got, Spade? Spade, pick with your mind, not your heart, champ. I mean, you talking to a guy who on a streak. I'm on a winning streak. I don't need your tips on Spade, how to pick. You ain't on no winning. You need winning. to take some tips from me. I'm on a streak, and the streak continues. Give me the Rockets, man. Give me the Rockets. We talking about the second or third best team in the Western Conference. Come on. Let's give me the serious. I take the Grizzlies. Give me the Grizzlies. I was gonna go Rockets. I thought you would have took the Grizzlies. Thought I could have persuaded I mean, you to take why, the Grizzlies. Don't don't do that because I don't want you to come back next show and I'll be do like, that. Space That's what you do. I was doing, you was like, well, I took, gave you one because I wanted to go blah blah blah. You know nah, what I mean? Because I, you I'm know, you came you up, to come to the Rockets. You came me. up come on the Ohio Rockets. State game because I wanted to go come to, but the I, Rockets. I go the opposite. I didn't think Ohio State would go out there and lay an egg, which they did. See, there he go. There he go with that. I go the opposite. Look, no, bro, come to the Rockets. Man. No, 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 no. Nah. Um, give me the Grizz. Give me the Grizz. I think it's going to be a tough game. I try. Harden is it? We know he it. Spade. Oh, give I me. I didn't. I wasn't even going to say that. Give me the Grizzlies. In a tough fault game. 
You got the Rockets, of course. I should have known you was picking the Rockets. Anything, anything, James Harden. I'm waiting for you to come. I'm waiting for you to come on the show in them shoe boots, them shoe boot kicks. Nah, but I am gonna get me some of those dip the toe in white shoes. What's the name of them shoes, man? I want some of those. I'm give me some of those. Let's they move. said they add an extra, extra twelve inches to your step back, help you get separation. Oh my gosh! Can we go ahead and go to the best part of the show today, let's, man? One of my favorite it. segments. Let's get. Can it. we do that? Let's get it, man. This last segment we call this the strong arm performer of the week. This is like the highest from the podcast. It's yep. the best accolade that a professional or even amateur athlete can receive from a podcast. It's the best shit in the world. Yep. We give this award to a male or fe- I give it to a male or female who raised his or her level Wait, of play I checked the tape. to ensure that that team got the victory. I have given it to more females than you. I thought one of your New Year's resolution was to lead lying in 2016. Ain't that what you told me? <laughs> this is going to bring the lies into 2017? Space. So check this out. I'm going to go ahead and pitch this thing to the pairs. Better yet, no, I'm not. No, I'm not. I'm throwing myself in the Now, nah, I'm going first, bro. I'm gonna... I do. I do. You usually be mad, but I'll make you go first. Now, nah, I'm going first, man. Because I got the real strong arm performer right here. Go. Strong arm performer no of the week goes to none other than a guy that puts, put together a phenomenal week this week. And that's Jimmy G. Butler. The G stands for Gits. Jimmy G buckets. Jimmy gets buckets. Jimmy oh Butler from gets gets dealt, gets <laughs> traded. That's what he gets. Whoa, bro! Don't don't slander my strong arm performer. Anyway, Jimmy bucket. J- Jimmy, I can't even talk. <laughs> Jimmy Butler had fifty two points, twelve boards, yes. six assists, three steals, and a uh, and a block, and a win over the Hornets. Came back, helped his team beat the Cavs. Came back after that. Had a 42 point, 10 rebound, 5 down, 3 steal game, and a overtime win over the Raptors. And for that performance right there, we better not trade Jimmy Butler. For that performance right there, Jimmy Butler, you are my strong arm performer of the week. Jimmy Butler, the real strong arm performer. That boy had, that boy put together up. a phenomenal week. Show me somebody else that I put together a phenomenal week, Spade. I got my hand up. Go you ahead. say he beat the Cavs. They did. Everybody played for the Cavs? It don't. Yeah, yeah, I don't know. It don't matter. They're the Cavs. Somebody insert that meme right here. Oh, <laughs> buddy. All right, that, that's pretty good. Jimmy did have a real good week. I mean, you got to when you don't know if you need to pack up your stuff and be prepared to get traded or no something like that. So, Jimmy, Jimmy good luck. No way. Good luck with that, Jimmy. I hope it works out for you. My strong arm performer of the week made history. It's 2017. You know how tough it is to make history? In 2017, everything been done before. Here we go. But not this right here. Here we go. The first ever. Here we go. 50 plus 15, 15 game in NBA history. And tied, this guy tied Wilt Chamberlain for the most points scored in a triple double in NBA history. I'm talking about James DeBeer Harden, who torched the Knicks for 53 points, 17 dimes. 16 rebounds, and he shot a glorious 9 of 16 from beyond the arc. Just cooking. He was just cooking fools up. For this performance, James Harden, you are my... Hold on, bro. I'm talking to James right now. Hold on. For this performance right now, James Harden, you are my strong arm performer of the week. Hey, it's the Knicks, bro. What that mean? They got they got Melo, they got Porzingis, trash. they got Derrick Rose. The Derrick Rose is a Chicago man. They got Derrick Rose. The Knicks are trash, bro. Jimmy Butler just beat three top teams in the East. The uh, the Cavs had all their starters. Jimmy the Butler all, and the, all the starters played. Just beat three top teams in the East. All the Cavs starters played in that game. Now you're going to make me look it up because you're trying to slander my dude. Nah, I was going to say don't even worry about it. I got it because I, I, I don't like how you finna try to play naive. I got it. Because you, you, ain't, you ain't right, man. You trying to act like Jimmy Butler ain't I'm put the... I'm going to just ask a question. I thought I was allowed to that's do what that. I, that's what I, I got to deal with, y'all. This, this is what I got to deal with. They played the Knicks. Like, he chopped up the Knicks. He chopped yeah. the Knicks up. He just got through telling me Porzingis is one of the best bigs in the league. Who? You. Who said that? You said that. I, I love Porzingis. You said you would take Porzingis if you couldn't get. 
Oh boy. boy. A lot of right. unicorn. A lot of unicorn. Wait, 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 wait. Wait, 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 wait. Oh boy. Let me look, cause you taking forever and we on camera. Now I'm looking, I don't see Kyrie. I don't see Kevin Love. I don't see J.R. Smith. Do you, J.R. Smith hurt! That's my point. Do you I see, see Kevin Love, Kyrie, or J.R. Smith? Do Three of the five Brian? starters didn't play. Do you see Brian, Brian play? Brian gave y'all 31 points. What that mean? They lost. Bro, three of the five starters didn't play, bro. They lost. Three of the five starters didn't play, bro. That ain't, that ain't play, got nothing to bro. do with Spade. Ladies and gentlemen of Strong On Sports, we want to thank y'all for tuning in. Leave your Strong On performance. McDermott uh, was 6-9. Jimmy was 7 or 20. He had 20 points. He almost had a triple-double. He he shot 20 times for 20 points. He almost messed around and got a triple-double. Ladies and gentlemen of Strong On Sports, we want to thank y'all for joining. Leave your Strong On Performer of the Week in the comment section down below. As usual, if you new here, bang the subscribe button. If you're a regular here, hit the like button. It takes two seconds, man. Spade, Spade trolling and they want to diminish my Bulls beating the Cavs. I don't want to hear that. The Bulls been struggling this year. I'll take every win we can get. And as usual, if you don't want to see two dudes arguing in the box on the two, we got audio podcasts everywhere, SoundCloud, Podomatic, iTunes. Thank y'all for showing your support over there as well. As usual, we want to thank y'all for tuning in. Spade, you got anything else to add? Nope. Well, James Harden. Well, we'll see. <laughs> oh, shoe boots. Shoe boots, sneakers. We'll see you. We'll see you guys next episode. We out. Peace.